Hello all, welcome to the lecture on pandas data frames. So let's have a quick recap on what we have done in the previous lecture on on pandas data frames. So in the previous lecture we have seen about introduction to pandas where we have been introduced to the pandas library. Then we have seen about how to import the data into spider. So once we imported we have also seen how to create a copy of original data. We have also seen how to get the attributes of data followed by that we have also seen indexing and selecting data. So in this lecture we are going to see about the data types of variables in a data frame. We are going to look about numeric data types and character data types which we are going to use often in our analysis. Once we know about the two data types, we are going to see how to check the data types of each column in your data frame. Followed by that we are going to look at how to get the count of unique data type. After that we will also see how to select the data based on particular data types. And then we are going to look at the concise summary of the data frame. Followed by that we are going to check the format of each column just to cross verify whether the data type is of desired data type or not. After that we are going to get the unique elements of each column. So in this lecture we will be looking at different topics as we have mentioned in detail. So first we will look about data types. So the way information gets stored in a data frame or in any python object basically affects whatever analysis that you are going to perform on your data frame as well as that results in a different form of outputs from the calculations that you have made. For example, you can't perform any numerical operations on a string. Similarly, you can't do any string related operations on a numerical data. So we have to be sure of what data type we are handling in our data frame. So basically there are two main types of data as discussed. One is being numeric and another one is being character types. And numeric data types basically includes all the numerical values which are in terms of integers and floats. For example, integer value being represented as 10 and float values are called whenever it has a numerical value with the decimal. So here if we have decimal values after 10 then it will be represented as 4 for example as 10.53. This is about the numeric data types that the python can handle. Next we are going to look about the character types. So character data types are nothing but all the strings are known as objects and pandas which can store values that contains numbers as well as characters. So whatever value that has been enclosed inside the single or double quotes will be considered as a string and that is being represented as object in pandas. And for example if you have a string which is enclosed inside the single or double quotes like category 1 that becomes a string value or an object. Even though it has both strings and numbers, whatever has been enclosed within single or double quotes will be considered as string in python. We will look in deep about what string values represents and what numerical values represents. So first we will look about the numeric types. Whenever we deal with the pandas library using the python tool, it is not necessary that both the pandas and python uses the same names for data types because pandas and base python uses different names for different data types. For example, here is a table to illustrate you how the data type is named in python and how the data type is being named in pandas library and followed by that we have the description as well. First we we'll look at integer that is being represented as int in terms of base python and in if you look at the pandas library the integers will be represented in terms of int64 and int64 corresponds to all numeric characters it can contain all the numeric characters next is a float float is being represented as float in python whereas in pandas it is being represented as float64 so float64 basically corresponds to all the numeric characters with decimal values. And this 64 simply refers to the memory allocated to store the data in each cell which effectively relates to how many digits it can store in each cell. So at the max it can store up to 64 bits which is equivalent to 8 bytes. 
So why we are really concerned about the memory allocation in a each cell? Because allocating space ahead of time allows computers to optimize storage and processing efficiency. Because whenever you read any data into spider or into any ID of Python, it basically gets read with the data type for each and every variable according to the values that it has. So in that case, it always allocates memory to store the data in each cell just to optimize the storage and processing efficiency. So now we have seen about the numeric types where we have seen about integer and float data types. Next we are going to see about the character types. In Python there are two data types that can handle character types. One is category and another one is being object. So now there are two different data types that are available for character types. So let's look at the difference between category and object. So when you look at the first point, the first point describes what the category data type would be. Basically any string value consisting of only a few different values then that becomes a category. And we have to convert such a string variable to a categorical variable which can save us some memory. Instead of keeping too many string values in a form of same representation we could always convert them to category data type to have it as a categories. A categorical variable takes on a limited fixed number of possible values because there is limits to the length that is being fixed and it can always accommodate only fixed number of possible values. You can't have 15 to 20 different values which forms categories. So in that case we always if you want to have too many categories in your column then you can go for object because the column will be assigned as object data type when it has mixed types. Basically whenever you have numbers which is being represented as 0, 1 that can also be an object if it is being enclosed within single or double quote or even if your column has mixed numbers that is uh, category 1, category 2, category 3 that can also be an object. And the other point is if a column contains NAND values basically in Python all the blank cells will be filled with the default NAND values. And the next point would be if a column contains NAND that is just a blank cell then the pandas will default to object data type. Because by default whenever you read any blank cell in spider all the blank cell will be read as NAND values and by default it will default to object data type because all the NANDs will be considered as a different value so it becomes an object data type itself. And here as an advantage is that for strings the length is not fixed how many ever number of elements you can have as a string and there is no limit to the number of possible values that you can have as an object. So this is the difference between the category and the object character types. So now we have seen the difference between the category and object data types. So now we know about the basic data types that we are going to often work with. So now it is time to check the data types of each columns of the data frame that we are working with. So basically if you want to check the data type of each column because whenever you have been given a data you want to really check what is the structure of the data that means which variable has which data type. In that case you can use D types because that returns a series with the data type of each column and the syntax would be you use D types along with the data frame name. So data frame dot D types will give you a series with the data type of each column. So the input would be cars underscore data one D types where cars the underscore data 1 is the data frame that we are looking at and the output is shown below where you have multiple variables correspondingly you have the data type of each variables. When we look at the first variable that is price, the price data type is of integer 64 which is the desired one and the age being float 64 and the kilometer has been read as object. Similarly, you will be able to check the data type for each variables using the D types command. So now we have an overall idea about what are the data types that we are going to work with using the cars underscore data. There is also an option where you can get the count of unique data types available in your data frame. 
So, in that case get underscore d type underscore counts returns the counts of unique data types in the data frame. So, if you want to summarize how many in 64 variables are there and how many float 64 variables are there, then in that case you can use get underscore d type underscore counts command and the syntax would be you will use the command along with the data frame name. So, let us see how to do that. So, here is an input where I have given cars underscore data 1 dot get d type counts. So, that will give me an output which is shown here. So, I have the summarization here where I have different types of data type as well as I have the corresponding count also. So, basically on the whole I have two variables of float 64 data type and I have four variables of in 64 data type as well as I have four variables which consist of object data type and d type in 64 represents the output data type since it has the values just being represented as in 64. So, now we also have an overall idea about the count of unique data types that we are going to handle with. So, now we know about how to get the data type of each variables. So, there might be cases where you want to perform the operations only on a numerical data type. Similarly, there can be cases where you are going to work with only categorical data type. In that case, there is also a platform where you can select the data based on the data types available in your data frame. So, let us see how to do that. So, select underscore d types is the command that we are going to use to select the data based on the data types and along with that you have to give the data frame name and since that is from the pandas library this it is being represented as pandas dot data frame dot select underscore d types and this command returns a subset of the columns from the data frame based on the column types you have specified inside the function. So, let us see how to use the function your data frame would be the data frame name and here is the command that is select underscore d types inside the function there are two arguments one is include and another one is exclude both being none by default if you want to select only those columns which are of object data type then you can just use object inside the include argument and if you want to exclude any particular data type from your analysis in that case you can use the data types under the exclude argument. So, let us see an example how we are going to do that. So, here is the input the data frame that we are working with is cars underscore data 1 and the command being select underscore d types and inside the function I have given exclude is equal to object and whatever data type that you are giving that should be given inside the square braces because you can also give multiple data types object comma in 64 basically in that case you will be excluding all the columns which are of object and integer 64 data types. Here I just want to include the object data types, so I have just given object. So, the output would be a data frame with the variables which are not of object data type. So, here is the output we have price age met color automatic cc and 8 with the data type integer and float. For example, the fuel type, the doors all those have been excluded. So, this is how we basically select the data based on the data types. So, next we are going to see about how to get the concise summary of data frame. So, there is a command called info that returns a concise summary of a data frame. The concise summary includes the data type of index, index being the row labels, the data type of row labels is what the output gives as well as it gives the data type of columns. It also gives the count of non-null values basically how many filled values are there in your data frame also it gives the memory usage of the data frame and the syntax would be you use the info command along with the data frame name. So, let us see how to do that I have given cars underscore data 1 dot info. So, the output will be similar to this where the output starting line is pandas dot core dot frame dot data frame. So, it is of pandas core data frame and int 64 index being the index are being represented in terms of int 64 where you have 1436 entries which are ranging from the 0 to 1435 row labels and totally you have 
10 columns in your data frame and after that you have list of variables along with that you have non-null values and what is the data type corresponding to that variable. So, for example, under the price variable the total observations are 1436 and there are also 1436 non-null values and the data type of price being integer 64. In this case, I have highlighted few rows. So, the purpose to check the concise summary of data frame is to verify whether all the variables have been read with the proper data type or not. If not, we have to go back and convert them back to the desired data type. So, for example, price and age are of expected data type. And if you see kilometer, there are no missing values actually, 1436 observations are non null and it is being read as object. Kilometer would be ideally be numbers, so it should have not been read as object, but in this case it have been read as object. Similarly, fuel type should be of object, there is no problem in that. And if you see HP, metallic color and automatic, they have been read as object float 64 in 64. Why? Because metallic color automatic basically represents categories under that color. Metallic color represents the whether the car has metallic color or not. So, it should be ideally it should be having some categories to it. So, there is some problem that is why it has been read as float 64. And if you look at the automatic column, automatic also represents the type of gearbox that the car possesses. So, in that case it should ideally be categories and it should be ideally be object. In this case it, it is in 64. So, now let us just check the format of each column. So, just to summarize by using info we can see that kilometer has been read as object instead of integer right. Next we have horsepower that has been read as object instead of integer as well. The next being metallic color and automatic both have been read as float 64 and in 64 respectively since it just has values 0s and 1s. That is the reason that it has been read as float 64 and in 64, but it has been read as object because since it has numbers only ideally it should have been read as integer 64, but it has been read as object and we have also seen there are missing values present in few variables. So, we have to encounter the reason behind all of these points. So, a unique function is used to get the unique elements of a column. The syntax being numpy dot unique of array, unique function comes from the numpy library and the input should be an array. You cannot perform the unique operation on a multiple arrays, it can be done on a single array only. So, here I have used np dot unique that is why? Because I have imported numpy as np, so the allies is just np. If you have not imported the numpy library at, po at this point of time, you can import numpy library as np and then you can follow with the code here. So, I am just printing np.unique and the input should be an array. So, I am accessing the kilometer variable from the cars underscore data 1. So, that will give me the unique values of kilometer column. So, there are so many unique values, but only few being shown here. You have a dot symbol that is the representation, you are not seeing all of the values. And the special thing about the kilometer is, it has a special character that is double question mark, which has been enclosed within single quote. That is the reason it has been read as object instead of 64. So, whenever you have a special character, all the values will be converted to character or string data type. So, that is why the kilometer has been read as object instead of in 64. Similarly, we are going to look at the variable horsepower. So, I am going to get the unique elements of the column horsepower using the same unique command. So, you have different values under the horsepower and you also have a special character like 4 question marks that is the reason it has been read as object instead of in 64. And when we look at the metallic color, I am using the same function dot unique to get the unique elements under the metallic color column. So, basically it has only the value 0s and 1s, 0 point and 1 point. So, that is why it has been read as float 64 since it has values 0 and 1. 
even though it has NAND values just because the value has decimals to it the whole variable have been read as float 64. So, next we are going to look at the another column that is automatic have used the same dot unique function to get the unique elements of the column automatic. So, the output being 0 and 1 as we know 0 and 1 represents category, but automatic has been read as integer 64 since it has value 0 and 1. Next we are going to look at the variable door and where we try to get the unique values out of the doors column. If you see the output there are few values 2, 3, 4 and 5. Also you have values as strings that is being represented as 5, 4, 3. So, there might be a typo where all the numerical 3 values have been typed as 3 in characters similarly for 5 and 4. So, this might be an error while getting the data from the source. So, this is the problem where door has been read as object instead of in 64 that is because of the values 5, 4, 3 which are in strings data type. So, now we have an overall idea about how do we check the data type of each variable and how to cross verify whether the each data type is of expected data type or not. If not we have seen how to get the unique elements of the columns to cross verify whether there are some problems to it so that we can go back and reconvert them back to the expected data type. So, next I am going to summarize whatever we have done in this lecture. Basically, we started with looking into two data types that is numeric and character for variables in a data frame. We have also checked the data type of each column whether each data type is of expected data type or not. And then we have also seen how to get the count of unique data types to get an overall idea about what are the data types that we will be working with in our data frame. And next we have seen how to select the data based on data types. For example, if you want to perform any operations that are completely related to numbers, then you would be selecting the data only with respect to numeric data types, which is like integer and float 64 data types. We have seen how to select the data based on data types and we have also looked at the concise summary of data frame to basically look at the variable and what is the data type of each variable. Along with that we have also seen how to get the count of non-null values are there which basically describes how many filled values are there in your data frame. After looking at the concise summary of data frame we had an idea about what each data type represents and after that we have also checked the format of each column just to cross verify whether it is of expected data type or not, but not all the variables are of expected data type. So, we have to convert them back to the expected data type in the next lecture. We have also seen how to get the unique elements of each column so that we got an idea about what each variables values are that is causing the variable which is not of expected data type. So, in the next lecture we will be looking at to resolve all the problems that we have encountered in this lecture.